As Going Deep continues, here's Chris Myers. Welcome back. The excitement and the glamour of women's gymnastics is undeniable, and so is the pressure. In a perfect world, parents and coaches would help young gymnasts keep their dreams and ambitions in perspective. But that's not always the case. As our report continues, we see how adults have failed their protégés. Now it's the sport itself that is taking steps to safeguard its most precious assets. Once again, here's Diana Nyack. The quest for perfection in women's gymnastics can dramatically alter a young girl's childhood. Sweet. From the day she starts kindergarten throughout her high school years, the seven to eight hours of training are a daily grind, and the extremely low-calorie diets are almost inhumane and have led to cases of serious eating disorders. At such tender ages, these girls often look to their coaches as Svengali's of sorts, the coach is always right. Can I have that big hug? And the thirst for fame and fortune in this sport can keep parents from putting their children's interests first. I have to say, that's the best floor performance I've ever seen her do. Dominique Mochianu was one of the sports elite last summer when her world was ripped apart by money, ambition, and a family feud fought in public. The gymnastics team! Dominique was just 14 when she helped the U.S. women win team gold in Atlanta. It's a great accomplishment for the whole team. Instantly, the spotlight grew and money poured in. That's also when Dominique's parents took control and allegedly mismanaged her investments. Emotionally, I've been, you know, scarred basically for life. Last October, Dominique rebelled. She sued and won financial independence from her parents. Well, now her parents and Dominique are working towards reconciliation. But parents aren't always the problem. She'll do four skills in a row. At these young ages, oh, children are also under the influence of their coaches. Bella Caroli, one of the world's best, is often criticized for his toughness. I never been too tough. I've been sometimes so soft, uh, the ones who demanded the softness, that <laughs> I, could not, I could not believe. And just take it to Kelly Shrug. She was probably one of the child. They will never have to raise my voice, ever. Or look at Nadia at that time. She was the toughness, I mean, the living toughness on the floor. I never had to be tough with her because she was tough with herself. Beautiful double twist. 1984 Olympian Kathy Johnson Clark believes most coaches have good intentions, but she admits they can have a nearly hypnotic effect that can be damaging. Because the athletes are so young, I think coaches and are afraid to let them have their own mind. They feel like they have to lay it out for them and do everything but breathe for them. When Bella Caroli coached the women's gymnastics team to gold at the 96 Olympics, Kerry Strug and Dominique Mochianu were two of his shining stars. They performed under bright lights, but they were in pain. Mochianu competed with a four-inch stress fracture in her leg. Strug became the game's superstar with her famous second vault, which she executed on a severely sprained ankle after Caroli encouraged her to compete with the injury. It was a widely criticized decision, but one Caroli still defends today. Sure, they're doing it because they know. They know this is my moment, this is my thing, this is not a dead or alive situation. U.S. Gymnastics has now brought on board nutritionists and psychological consultants to work with athletes, coaches, and parents. And they brought in former Olympians like Kathy Rigby, a difficult one arm walkover, who won her 12 year battle with anorexia and bulimia to mentor athletes. I'm really proud of gymnastics in that um, there is an organization within our federation that they are now addressing issues that, you know, that affect uh, young athletes, whether it's eating disorders or transitions or, you know, who do I call if I, I don't like what's going on in a gym. Perhaps today's stars are lucky to benefit from the mistakes of the past. Vanessa Atler, whom we met earlier as one of America's leading candidates for the Sydney Olympic Games next summer, represents all that is balanced in the sport. And her coach, Steve Rybacki, seems to understand the fine line between pushing and pushing too hard. If you push too far, you get them in a negative situation where they're not going to be progressing or they're not going to be reaching or striving for their goals. 
and then if you don't push hard enough, they're not going to get to their goal. It, it's a constant uh, decision every single day how much is too much. You still backed off. You're still a little bit far away again. You feel Vanessa Atler uh, has kind of done it right. Her, her circle of people have done it right, don't you? She is a kid who has been trained not to diet. What she does is she works really hard. I think she knows the foods that work really well for her, and she eats what she wants, when she wants to eat it. Her weight is what it is. And she's beautiful, and she's strong, and she's powerful, and she's healthy. That, that one's good. Vanessa Adler is healthy, but what about the sport of gymnastics? Once dangerously off balance, will it regain its equilibrium? Diana, one of the things gymnastics has done to try and help the problem, they set an age limit, 16, but it is controversial. It's very controversial. I mean, you know, in one way, I guess it'll solve some of the real young girls getting into the problems we just talked about. But how many great athletes have we known who have been 14 and 15? I mean, Nadia Komenich, Chris Everett, we would have never seen these girls. And they came into their maturity in every way at the right age. So, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of think it's a shame. I remember asking Bella Caroli at the Summer Games uh, in Atlanta what he thought of an age limit. He said, well, at birth, I think, would be a good <laughs> yeah, He time. likes to start young. <laughs> Taking it to that extreme. Why is there such an elite drop-off in, in gymnastics from the, 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 the top half and then the rest of the pack, more than really any other sport? You're absolutely right. I mean, think about if we went out to see the 100th tennis player, the 100th golfer. Uh, of course, consistency is different, but they, they look, their skill level looks just about the same as the number one guy or woman. And in this sport, my God, the drop-off is by the time you get, honestly, to the 12th 13th, 15th person, even at the Olympic Games, those people can, can, can't even complete the routines that the number one and the gold medalists do. So it's, it's a tribute to the level that they spend in the gym. Ten years, eight hours a day, nobody else does that. That's a strong commitment, and hopefully the U.S. team will be in the medal hunt again. They will be. They will in be. The, uh, in the games in Sydney. Thanks very much, Diane. Okay. And coming up in just two years.